Brandon was looking to get this matter behind him, accept responsibility for his part in the wrongdoing, and, and make amends for what happened, uh, and, and certainly take care of his children. You seem uh, remorseful to you at all? It's hard to tell in court, kind of. Absolutely. Uh, Brandon is, is distraught, remains distraught, has been distraught throughout these proceedings, um, looking to get this behind him and move forward with his life. The judge obviously didn't have a lot of confidence uh, in his ability to meet the many conditions that were laid out there. Um, do you have confidence in him, or are we going to be back here in eight weeks uh, looking at a stiffer sentence than he was promised? Brand Brandon assures me uh, and assures himself, his family, and the community that uh, he will make amends for his part in this wrongdoing, and uh, he's got a lot riding on that. Um, the judge made it crystal clear that if he fails in any respect, uh, he's facing dire consequences, including loss of his liberty. So. Uh, there's a lot at stake for him. And he, he understands the gravity of it. Absolutely. Uh, I, I'm not involved in any uh, easy cases. This is not an easy case. This is a very dramatic, emotional uh, set of circumstances associated with this. Uh, Brand is looking to uh, make amends and move forward with his life. In that period, which is a little over a month, he managed to write $44,000 worth of, of checks to himself where he forged Jenna's dad's signature on those checks. And then there are an additional three checks, two to this woman in Watertown that he apparently owed money to that totaled $800, another to a bar for $500. That's not why people were donating this money when they were hearing Jenna's story. So first of all, we want him to give that money back to the trust fund for the two daughters, which is where it belongs. And we want him to get evaluated for a substance abuse problem, get any treatment he needs, and those are maybe some steps to being held responsible for this. I mean, I, I, I'm not optimistic that it's going to work out. I mean, you can see, saw the day he wasn't even um, uh, in court on time. If he, my understanding is he lives in Wheatsport or Port Byron. I don't know what he was doing on the throughway allegedly, and got claimed he got a flat tire. So I haven't seen a lot of personal responsibility, both uh, in from what I know about this case, what I know about him generally. So we'll see what happens. Um, so, I mean, it, it, so you'd like to just get the money back. I mean, you're not intent on, on making him serve jail time unless he fails to meet the, no, we, the, even, the conditions. No, even, even if he pays the restitution prior to sentencing, we may, depending on what we see in the probation report, recommend up to six months in jail. We're not necessarily going to recommend no jail. I don't know that the judge will necessarily give him that if he's done everything he's supposed to, but we reserve the right to recommend up to six months in jail. And that's only if he does everything he's supposed to. If he doesn't pay the restitution, if he doesn't show up for sentencing, if he doesn't address substance abuse issues, he doesn't do anything the judge told him to do, then we're probably gonna recommend prison under those circumstances.